Hey there, my name is Jeremy Fontenot. I want to welcome you to this episode of Revival Missions. And today, in this episode, I want to begin to unpack a series for you that I am entitling How to Pray and Get Answers. I don't know about you, but I don't like uh, shadow boxing. Give me a punching bag. I don't play air guitar. I play a real guitar. And when I pray, I don't like to pray amiss. I want answers to my prayers. And that is my right as a child of God. You know, God is all about results. As a matter of fact, in the very beginning, God told mankind to be fruitful and to multiply. In other words, go out and produce. And there is a kind of prayer life that produces answers and produces results. Do you know that it is, it is God's good will and His desire to give you His very kingdom? God is eager to give you his kingdom, and he actually longs um, to and desires to answer your very prayers. How awesome is that, to know that God is poised and postured in a manner to answer your prayers. And so that's what I want to begin to unpack for us uh, today, and th this will be a series, we'll, we'll roll out videos, and if you want the show notes, please uh, send us an email to revivalmissions101 at gmail.com, and we'll, we'll send you uh, the notes here, the scriptures and everything, but you know, God desires that you and I have joy. How do I know this? Because Jesus, he said in John Chapter 16, I'm reading out of the Passion Translation in verse 23. He says, for here is eternal truth. When that time comes, you won't need to ask me for anything. So the, these are the very words of Jesus himself. You won't need to ask anything from me, but instead, you will go directly to the Father. We have direct access to the Father because of our relationship with Jesus. And if you don't yet have that relationship with Jesus, you can call upon him even now. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And if you'll invite him to come into your life to save you, to forgive you of your sins, he is faithful to do just that. And he'll step into your life and he will actually bring you eternal life, and you can enter into this realm where, where you have an intimate relationship with Jesus, and you have direct access to Father God, and you can begin to ask. I mean, what, what Jesus presented to his, his fellow brethren, if you will, the very children of God, is, is out of this world. Jesus came and presented the kingdom. He came and presented kingdom life. He came and presented the Father to us and said that it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom of God. And, and he says, but instead you'll go directly to the Father and ask him for anything you desire, anything you desire, and he will give it to you because of your relationship with me. Jesus is a friend with benefits. To, to, to ask Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life, to be your friend, to be your Lord, to be your Savior. You come in, you step into a relationship where there are benefits. God has prepared a table to feast on, and it is the goodness, the, the fatness of life. And let me, let me show you why. He says, until now, you've not been bold enough to ask the Father for a single thing in my name. But now you can ask and keep on asking, and you can be sure that you'll receive what you ask for, and your joy will have no limits. God wants to take the, the limits off of your joy, and he does that through answered prayer. Real prayer 
is awesome. It is, it is a life of seeing God show up, the supernatural God show up in the natural, in everything that touches your life. And he's actually made a provision for everything that you need and everything that you desire, everything that you want. And God wants your joy to be full. He wants your cup, if we could uh, illustrate it that way, to be overflowing. God wants you to live in the overflow of joy and answered prayer. And so our, our key scripture on, on how to get your pr- how to pray and how to get answers to your prayer is found in Matthew chapter 7, verses uh, 7 through 8. Jesus said these words. Now, he, is, he was the, the Son of God, but he, he is Lord. He is God. And, and just look at this invitation that, that he presents to you and I. You know, we've got to take uh, the words of the Bible that were written thousands of years ago. I mean, this, this book, the Bible, it is, it is powerful, it is living, it is active. And we've got to take those words for us today and not just look at it as words that Jesus or, or God spoke to a, 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 to a generation in another time, but he speaks to us in this generation and in this time, and he presents this concept and this promise for you and I. He says to ask, and that word ask in, in the uh, original uh, language of um, Greek and, and Aramaic, it, it denotes insistent asking. It means to be persistent in your asking. In other words, if you ask one time and you don't see it right away, continue asking, continue being persistent because God likes a a fervency to our faith that we, we press in. As a matter of fact, Jesus said to a crowd that he was ministering to, the kingdom of God is being preached uh, since the time of John the Baptist. The kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing into it. Do do you know that there were were cities that Jesus could not enter into openly because if he would, he would have been trampled. There there were times when Jesus, in his ministry, he had to get out onto a boat and, 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 and push out just a ways to step away from the people so that he would not be trampled. People were pressing into his words, into the message, because everything that he was, he was sharing with them, the people they desired greatly. They wanted healing. They wanted the power of God. They, they, they wanted to see God do something in their own lives. And so some of them would spend three days without eating with Jesus just to hear his words and watch him demonstrate the reality of the very kingdom of God. So there is a pressing in to the things of God and the things of Scripture. And, you know, we need to be on fire for God. We need to have a passion for the things of God. And I'll, I'll talk about that in just a moment. But Jesus says, ask. And it, it will be given to you, or, or ask, and, and the gift is yours. And we, we need to look at and examine how definite the, 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 this, this tone of, of, of uh, you know, Jesus is very definite in, in what he's saying here. Ask, and it will be given to you. If Jesus says something, you can take it to the bank. He means what he says. The, Bible's, the Bible says that God honors his word even above his name. God honors the things that he has said. That, that's why it's so important that you and I, we partner with his word. And God, God likes that when we partner with his word. And we, we come before him and we make our requests known. And, you know, I, I think about my son. He is very persistent in the things that he wants. 
and he knows how to ask and he knows how to how to frame things. And, you know, sometimes he, he really gets his way. <laughs> we'll start out a conversation and, and it's a definite no for me, but somehow he convinces me. And uh, I think in some ways that's to be applauded. And, and, and this is this is what God is giving us permission to do. He, he, he invites us to come and to make our case before him. He likes faith. He's drawn to faith. And you think about the woman who, who came to Jesus. She was outside of the covenantal blessings of the Israelites, and it was not yet time for the Gentiles to receive the full measure of what Jesus was bringing. And yet she made a case to Jesus, and he said, Oh, daughter, great is your faith. Faith is powerful. So he says, he says, seek and you will find. In other words, seek and you will discover. Knock and it will be open to you for everyone. Think about that word. Jesus says for everyone. In other words, there's no exceptions. So you are included. You're included in this for everyone who what? Who asks, receives. Now, we can say this because of, of what James says. I think it's in James chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. The only exception is, is if you ask, but, but you don't ask with faith. You have to ask without doubting. You have to believe. In fact, Jesus said that when you pray, believe that you have received it and you will have what you say. That is so powerful. And you've got you've to meditate on scriptures like this. You, you can't just pass by them, zoom by them. You've got to take a scripture like Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Ask and it will be given. And you've got to begin to meditate just as a cow will chew on grass and, and, and it, it, it'll, it'll go down. They'll ingest it, but it'll come back up and they, they call it chewing the cud. They'll just chew on that. You've got to meditate on these scriptures and until it makes that 18-inch journey from here to here and it gets in, in your spirit. It gets in your heart. Meditate upon it until it becomes alive on the inside of you. And that's when you'll begin to taste and see that the Lord is good because you begin to walk out these, these things that the, that the scriptures present uh, for you and I to have. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and, and you will discover. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Now, at the outset of this series, we have to understand, we have to realize that our prayers are heard and answered not because of us. Because I think a lot of times people will get into a, a performance mode. We'll, we'll, they'll begin to view, you know, God will answer my prayers based upon how well I've, I've done today. And then people get into a, a performance mode. My prayers are not answered because of what I've done. My prayers are answered because of who Jesus is and what he has done. And so we, when you begin to understand that, that context, the framework upon which uh, our prayers are answered, then, then, then you, you begin to understand the ways of God and the ways of the kingdom of God. My prayers are answered because of what Jesus did on the cross. And, and, and Jesus, he gave us many things. He gave us eternal life. He gave us salvation. Uh, he gave us love. He gave us forgiveness. And he, he gave us his, his blood. He gave us his power. He gave us his Holy Spirit. And he gave us his name. That name is so powerful that 
whenever I pray in the name of Jesus, it is as though Jesus himself is, is making his request known to God. Praying in the name of Jesus, adding that, that tag, that name, at the end of our prayer isn't something that man came up with. Jesus taught us to pray using his name. So when you come before God and you make your requests known to him and then you say, in the name of Jesus, it carries some weight because you're there in his name. You know, it's, it's like a boss telling an employee, hey, listen, you go tell my manager that I said you can do it. And so that, that person will go and say, hey, the boss said I could use this, or the boss said I could, I could do this. Carries name, carries authority. When we say in the name of Jesus, it carries authority. It has some weight before God. And you have to understand that. That when we approach God, we use the name of Jesus. And when we come, we don't come as beggars. We're not beggars. We are children of a living God. In one sense, Jesus is our older brother who showed us the way. He showed us the way. And Jesus had results when he prayed. I mean, he could take a little boy's lunch and multiply it to feed tens of thousands of people. Jesus spoke to the wind, he spoke to the waves, and the elements obeyed him. When Jesus prayed, heaven backed up his prayers. When we pray, heaven will back up our prayers when we pray in the name of Jesus. This is so powerful. Now, there's some, there's a scripture in, in Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. God speaks to Jeremiah, his, he's in a prison cell, and he says, call out to me. Now that word, call out, it's, it's the word um, kara, it's in Hebrew, and um, it appears over 700 times. Uh, I, know, it, I know in the Bible it, at least 700 times, but that may just be referring to the Old Testament. I'm, I'm not quite sure on that, but 700 times. And it means to call out loudly, to call out loudly. You know, God recognizes passion, and when we elevate our voice, when we lift our voices up, it is, it gets the attention of God. You know, in, in South Korea, when they pray, it sounds like a mighty roar in the church. They don't pray silently. You know, sometimes in certain circles and denominations, it's like, hey guys, let's pray, and everybody goes to a, a silent prayer. But there's something about Elevating your voice, lifting up your voice loudly before God. God recognizes passion. And those who are passionate, who step out in, in, in demonstrations of faith, actually get the attention of God. Blind Bartimaeus, he's sitting out by the road, and he heard that Jesus was, was walking by and he began to elevate and lift up his voice in a loud manner to get the attention of Jesus. And when they told him to be quiet, he yelled out even louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. And this got the attention of Jesus. And he said, what do you want? He said, I want to see. And he got what he desired. Same with Zacchaeus, a very short man. He was in the crowd trying to, you know, 
uh, see Jesus and, and he couldn't because he was too short. And what did he do? He climbed up a tree. And when Jesus saw him, he said, Zacchaeus. He said that by a word of knowledge. He knew his name. Zacchaeus, come on down from that tree. Today, I'm going to eat dinner in your house. He got the attention of God. Be on fire today. Step out in faith. Elevate your voice. And so he says to Jeremiah, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. That word mighty means inaccessible. God will show you things that are inaccessible. And what is that? That's revelatory knowledge. He'll give you fresh revelation. He'll give you insight on how to make certain decisions. And he'll give you insight into his, his work. There really is a way of the kingdom of God that will cause you to be successful. He invites us. He says, he says meditate in this book, the Bible, day and night, and you will have success. Go and read Joshua chapter 1. Success and prosperity come from following Jesus. You'll never lose if you follow Jesus. You'll never go backwards if you follow this book, if you follow his words, meditate on it day in and day night, uh, day in and, and, and day out. And um, I, I want to I close um, this teaching today with a quote from John Wesley. John Wesley was a powerful man of God. He shook two continents over a couple hundred years ago and started the whole Methodist movement. As a matter of fact, when they used to refer to England, they would say, are you talking about before the Wesleys or after the Wesleys? Because they shook um, uh, England. They, 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 they shook America. And he said this, he, he operated and, and had revival uh, throughout his ministry. And he said these words, it seems like God is limited by our prayer life. Think about the significance of that. It seems like God is limited by our prayer life. Begin to invite God into your day. Because he's limited. He's limited by our prayer life. Our life should be a life of prayer, a constant prayer and communication and dialogue with God. He says, and he can do nothing for humanity unless someone prays and asks him to do it. Begin to pray today to see God show up in your life. Now, here's another man who raised dozens of people from the dead, and he, he made this statement, and, and you know, it's, it seems too simple. It seems so simple that many people, that they miss it because it's so simple. But Smith Wigglesworth, who would raise the dead, he would walk into a funeral home, grab the dead person, and command him to come back to life and throw him up against the wall. And uh, he would see them come back to life. He said these very words. He said, there is something about believing God. There's something about believing God that will cause him to pass over a million people to get to you. There's something about believing God, taking him at his word, knowing that if we ask, we will receive, that if we seek, we will find, and if we knock, the door will be answered to you. Real quickly, before we close, I want to share this story. There was a man named George Jeffries. He had a powerful healing ministry. And they came to him um, in his late years. And they knocked on his door and they, they wanted to interview him. And they said, they said tell us the secret to, to the healing ministry. And he grabbed his Bible and he said, do you have one of these? And they said, yeah. He said, believe it. It's just that simple. If you will begin to believe the words of Jesus and begin to ask, if God won't withhold his own son from us, then he won't withhold anything from you and I. Begin to ask 
Begin to seek, begin to knock, and you'll see God's kingdom life come to you. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. For more teachings, please go to jeremyfontenot.com. That's where you'll find our media ministry, Revival Missions. We are a ministry that prioritizes in winning souls and provide biblical teaching in healing, faith, financial prosperity, and living free from sin and living in victory. If you would like to be more than just a casual listener, but would like to financially partner with us to see the kingdom of God advance, please go to Jeremy Fontenot forward slash give for a quick and easy way to give. Thanks for watching. God bless.